Before talking about the controller, I have to admit first that this video is a little bit of a Trojan horse. The quad that you see on the right here is my 3-inch 1S platform, and while 3-inch 1S is not really new at all, there have been many people that have done 3-inch 1S, I have worked really hard to optimize this platform with the motors and the props and everything to get it functioning to the level of performance that I want. And Normally this quad is around 50 grams all up weight with a 600 milliamp single cell. This one, however, has a single 18650 cell on it, and that makes it 86 grams all up weight. So you're watching flight video, all the flight video in this, in this video comes directly from this quad with this controller, and it has an 86 gram all up weight on three inch props, 1S. I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end, but uh, let's focus on this controller now. So Beta FPV came out with this controller, or just showed off this controller a while ago. It's not, it's not a really new product, but it hasn't really been available until more recently. And I didn't get one of the prototypes, but I immediately submitted an order to carry the controller at FPV Cycle because I was just so darn interested in it. Interested in it. And so I finally got it in my hands, and it this is... This is one of the very few products in this industry that delivers on its promise 110%. And this controller is easily the very best value controller on the market for full-size quads, as well as micros or anything whoop related. And in fact, the video that you're watching, the flight video that you're watching coming from this quad is with the built-in SPI receiver. That's the little crummy antenna for the SPI receiver. And I know many of you that have used Whoops have re recognized that the reception of these built-in receivers are really, really crummy. And somehow, even with any of my FR Sky controllers, I have four of them, all of them have really crummy range. I mean, I'm, I'm talking max 50 to 60 feet before I start getting control signal loss of some sort. And with this controller, as well as the Newbie Drone controller, actually, they have a Whoop controller as well, the range is easily five, maybe 10 times as far as any FR Sky controller that I have. That's probably the most impressive part of this controller. Next, when you look at the gimbals, they're, they're, they're genuine gimbals. They're not, they're not fake toy gimbals. And on top of that, the moment I picked up the controller and I felt the gimbal and I felt the throttle, this throttle is crazy smooth and Again, I keep saying in all my videos that smoothness is a really hard thing to talk about and convey. But in this particular situation, the throttle, you can see it, it doesn't flop around. Like the throttles on, on my uh, other controllers, they, they pretty much flop around. But I actually like a little bit of friction on my throttle. Not a lot. I just don't want the stick to actually flop around. But the issue is that when you start putting a little bit of friction on the throttle, then it becomes a little bit sticky. And we're like, I'm usually trying to do teeny tiny little micro movements and it makes it annoying because once you give it enough pressure to move the stick, then it kind of jumps. And so you get that like sticky stick issue. <laughs> and this stick, thankfully, it's very smooth. It has friction to it, but it does not have that sticky sensation when you're doing tiny little micro movements, which is fantastic. The gimbals also feel really great when you move them around. I'm really impressed with the gimbals. They're definitely not full range. They're a little bit smaller than the um, Tango. Oh, I should actually bring the Tango and compare it. So here's the Tango. Here's the Beta FPV controller. They're very comparable size, a very comparable size. And the travel on the Tango <laughs> is actually just about the same as the Beta FPV controller, <laughs> which I'm pretty surprised to say. This controller might be just a touch smaller than the Tango, just a touch smaller, tr shorter travel than the Tango when I feel the difference. Anyways, looking at the rest of the controller, you see down here it's got a USB port. That means it does work with simulators. And also, you can charge the battery through this USB port. I'm not sure what this audio jack is. Maybe it's a trainer port of some sort. And looking at the battery, actually, it comes with a 2S LiPo, which is really impressive because it charges. I mean, it's a, it's a self-contained unit, which is really, really nice. 
and you're probably also noticing this texturing on the back of the controller and the various and the, the actual shape of this controller. So I have worked really hard on my own controller design, even though it'll probably never see the light of day. But when you hold this controller, it's it's fantastic for thumbers, obviously, and it's a little bit smaller. And it, even though I have big hands, it fits my hands totally fine. But for pinchers, it's also not that bad. It is a little bit smaller than I would like it to be. But what helps pinchers more than anything else is this ridge on the back here. You can rest your fingers on this ridge. That's what I discovered when I was making or working on the design of my own controller. This ridge back here is really important for pinchers to be able to grip the controller really comfortably. The controller itself has a really smooth touch to it. It's not like a cheap, chintzy feeling plastic. It actually has like a really nice touch feel and it actually has a good amount of weight. It's about 230 grams. So it doesn't feel super cheap and chintzy in your hands. It's got four switches up here. This is a three-way, that's a two-way. There's another three-way and a two-way over here. And it does, uh, I think, three different protocols. It says it does D8, which I think is the most valuable protocol, as well as the two different versions of D16. And there's instructions on how to cycle through those things. You can bind it to multiple quads, and it actually has OpenTX on the controller, which means you can actually plug it into the companion app and do all your settings and whatnot in that app. You don't have a screen on the controller, so you can't really do anything in the field, but if you really wanted to do something in OpenTX, you could do it through the app. Now, I personally don't really see that much value in that. I actually don't think OpenTX is a great system. It just is the most prevalent and nobody's really come out with another system that's any better than it. So it is what it is. This thing has OpenTX on it and it's, it's interesting that they went with that even though it has no screen and no other functions in my opinion i think the combination of this controller and that tiny d8 receiver is good enough to take you through everything until you move up to crossfire and once you do move up to crossfire or dji or whatever well then you're going to want a real controller you're going to need to have a real controller and you're going to need to have real stuff and you're going to you, you should probably just go for the full crossfire so you get all the features and everything that you could possibly need. And I do think that Crossfire in the future will be extremely beneficial to have. I'm not going to say more about that, but I do think it'll be really beneficial, even more beneficial than it is now in the future, in a couple of years. And uh, DJI is what I've been using more and more, but of course I use my Crossfire for so many other things as well, as well as many of my little baby tooth. <laughs> the baby tooth. So I'll talk a little bit about the baby tooth. The video that you've been watching is all on a single battery. It's all, the, there's two streams, top and bottom, and they're both on the same battery. Like there's nothing, no more battery being added to the thing. I, I moved locations at one place because I got kicked out because the security guard saw me, so I left. Even though there was nobody around, there was a security guard still working. Uh, anyways, you get about 13 minutes, 13 to 15 minutes of flight on this 1S battery. And it uses about 70% of, not even 70, like 60 something percent of the battery. Uh, 1S 18650, this particular cell is rated at supplying 20 amps. It is fine, except that the quad doesn't really function under 3.2, 3.1 volts. I mean, it does, it barely flies, but it's not really fun to fly, so it's kind of a waste of time. If you just strapped two or three 600 milliamp cells in parallel to this quad, it would have a lower weight, perform better, and give you more flight time. And so it's just really impressive to see this thing perform the way it does with an 86 gram all of weight. Uh, the other th reason that I haven't spoken too much about this quad is because the 1S boards that are available are garbage. I I'm sorry to say it. There's not a single 1S board. The Hummingbird is not bad. The FR Sky single 1S, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry to say it, but they have so many problems. We've had so many failures. We, we sell them, so I see the failure rates, and it's just, it's just unacceptable. Sure, you can buy it now and use it, but we're working on four different boards right now, and hopefully one of them will come to completion soon and will be of suitable quality to be used. Okay, take care. Floss your teeth. <laughs> Lots more coming. Bye.